Well, thank you guys for being here. So I was late. Hey, we had a game day uh, administrative meeting today with uh, all the athletic directors, uh, campus police, uh, the band, the cheerleaders. Um, so it got me really excited. So I'm really excited right now because, I mean, it's, it's coming. It's coming quick, and, and game day is right around the corner for us. Heck, they play. Alva High plays a lot earlier than we do, so I know he's really – Getting antsy, but I got I got a few more days. I think we got nine. We're nine days out, so um, we still got a lot of work to do. Uh, we're a much deeper, much improved team. You'll see a much improved team. Just technically, uh, we'll be more sound. Um, our coaching is better. Our players are better. That always makes you for a winning combination. You know, um, am I promising wins? No. All right, but I will promise a better product on the field. All right, there might, as long as we stay healthy, knock on wood. We're going to be uh, um, very sound in what we do, a lot more so than we were last year. Uh, and it all starts up front. Our O-lines and D-lines are much deeper, uh, much better than they were last year. Um, and that, a lot of that has, is attributed to depth and second year in the program, you know, second year in the system. They understand what we're trying to do, both offensively and defensively. Uh, we got a new defensive line coach and Coach uh, Carlton Hall, who comes to us from Williams College. I don't know if you all are familiar with that. It's back east. Uh, before that, he was at um, Elon. Before that, he was at Harvard, Yale, University of Houston. Uh, went to school at Vanderbilt. He's from Midwest City, so he's an Oklahoma guy. And uh, played for the San Diego Chargers after Vanderbilt. So, very experienced guy. Uh, now I'm not the oldest guy on staff, which makes me feel a lot better. You know, uh, but he uh, he's really helped our young D linemen. We got a bunch of young D linemen we brought in that are very talented. Uh, we're a much bigger team than, than we were in the in la last year. So, um, you know, really it's been a, a blessing this, this fall to have such good weather too. So with such good weather, you know, we can get a lot more reps in, a lot more work in to get those young guys ready because we're going to play a few freshmen. Well, there will be a few freshmen playing this year uh, that are, are – and it's not because they necessarily have to play. It's because they're better than what we had, and that's why you recruit. You recruit to improve. You recruit to be recruit to be better. So I have the fortune in college. You can do that. If you didn't like how a guy was performing, you re re go recruit a better one, um, which is is the name of the game in college football. So uh, very excited. There's not too many more battles going on. Like last year at this point, I still didn't know basically who was going to play quarterback. I still didn't know a lot of the starting positions, but we're pretty set now as far as uh, you know who's starting and. and Who's going to be? We're, we're going to roll out there with that first game, September first, at 7 p.m. against Arkansas Monticello. So really excited about uh, where we're at with that because then knowing where you're at with the roster, you can progress better during practice. You can make, utilize your time more efficiently, and uh, we've been able to do that. So really, really um, happy with our progression there. Last night we practiced. Last night was uh, very spirited practice. We practiced uh, under the lights last night. Had a long goal line session. Um, offense scored about six out of ten, ten plays, which um, doesn't bode well for the defense. But the guys were covered. They're just guys making plays, going up, making plays, catching the ball. We got four tight ends that are about six four. They're real matchup problems. Uh, they pr present a lot of matchups for our own defense, but we really present some matchup problems for the defenses we're going to play. Um, a little bit about Arkansas myself. They got a new, the same head coach they had last year, but they have a new defensive coordinator who comes from Coffeyville, Coffeyville Community College uh, in Coffeyville, Kansas. Um, when he was a defense coordinator there in 2014, it took a year off, but in 2014 was his last time he was there. They were number one defense in the country, junior college. Uh, play a very aggressive style defense that, uh, you know, will present some challenges when it comes to play calling. Uh, but with an experienced quarterback coming back, I think that uh, we'll have a lot of answers for what they're trying to do. And very, like I said, um, with the experience we do have on the offensive side, you know, we should be able to counteract that. Now, offensively, they each – the past three years have come out with a to totally new offense, the last three years, Arkansas Monticello has. Uh, they come out uh, last year in a two-back – two back, Two running back formations, you know, try to pound the ball at you. Uh, and then the year before, there were there were four wides, one running back, threw the ball every other play or every play. Uh, didn't run the ball very much, so we don't really. We think we're going to get the two back stuff that we got last year because they were pretty successful offensively. They had an offense that was uh, pretty efficient um, with what they were trying to do. So 
Um, we're predicting or educated guess. I hate the first game because you never know exactly what people are going to do. You know, the second game you got a really good idea. First game you don't. We don't get to scrimmage, so we don't ever get scrimmage film. Uh, and, and NCAA doesn't allow you to scrimmage. So uh, that being said, you kind of go in a little bit blind and hope that your base packages will carry you through the first game. So, uh, but like I said, we're very, very excited about about what's to come and. and I mean, we got, we do have, and it comes down to players and culture. And I say this to my team all the time, you know, schematically, you know, no one should ever be able to beat you on the board because the last guy with the pin is always going to win. Last guy with the pin is always going to win. It comes down to the players, and and if they decide to do and execute the way that you have trained them to do, then they're going to win. And I've been really trying to, you know, kind of pound that into their head. But, uh, you know, I think they're understanding that, and they're really uh, buying into what we're trying to do. And, uh, uh Man, I've had a lot of fun this this training camp. This training camp's been a lot of fun because I just get to work on on coaching the guys instead of you know trying to you know put in new things and and uh, you know scheme things to beat you know beat people or trick people. So hopefully we want to trick as many people as we did we were trying to do last year. So um, I guess after that we'll slide up to questions. Anybody? I know there's gonna be personnel questions. That's what I expect. So that's why I didn't go through every guy. So. Uh, um, personnel question. Anybody have any personnel questions or really any questions? That kicker? Yeah, that's the one I hate. <laughs> uh, our kicking situation is um, not ideal right now. We got a freshman that's doing the best so far. Uh, then we have a returning sophomore uh, from Broken Arrow and, and Andrew Lesnick that's doing a good job. He's really good at kickoffs. We have a kickoff guy and we have a punter. We have actually have three punters that are really good. Um, as far as kicking goes, we're, that's probably where we're struggling the most, honestly, and I can say that because that's, that's – and the kids know that and the, the kickers know that. They just – they're inexperienced and those pressure situations, when we put them in in practice, right now they're struggling a little bit and um, – we're going to, you know, have a definite yard line that we can actually try to kick a field goal. They're going into games. Uh, we try one with, with, without lack of trying. Um, we had a couple guys commit, and they decided to go to a junior college to see if they get a Division One offer instead. And so um, we thought we thought it, we had that plan or we had that solved. But um, and that, you know, every once in a while they look like, you know, NFL kickers, and then the next day they look like they couldn't kick off I mean kick it at all you know so I don't really know what what else to say but um, we're still trying to sort that out as far as who our kicker is going to be on field goals so and extra points are easy I mean they don't struggle on extra points at all you know extra points are now are almost automatic even for these college kids you know so uh, yeah that's where we're at with the kicking situation got some of your new players that you're excited about Oh, man, I'm going to go over the freshmen because we had a great signing class. The last two classes have been great signing classes. Uh, um, on defense, a guy named Maurice Wright from Luther, Oklahoma. The kid, he might start the first game as a freshman. Um, very, very talented kid. Uh, nobody's really recruiting him except Southwestern. We beat Southwestern on him, which you always like. Uh, but he should be a Division One player. He's a Division One talent. Um, we noticed him at, at our team camp. And he is uh, dominating everybody. This is two summers ago. And he is just dominating everybody. And uh, he was all state, all state, first team all state for Luther. Played the all state game over there in Tulsa. Uh, really dynamic player. Play safety. Play safety for us. Um, and we think he's going to be a big, big contributor right away. Uh, the other freshman right now on defense is probably going to play. He might start too. Is Blake Benham. He's from Little Stillwell, Oklahoma. Little B Town, Far East. Uh, and he's, he's done a great job. He's playing nose guard. Nose guard for us, interior tackle. Uh, as explosive as what we have, you know, as most explosive guy probably we have on the D-line um, as far as the interior D-line. I'm not talking about Joby. Uh, so really excited about him. He's, he's given us some trouble during camp. Um, and we, we have a very good center. Our center is a new guy, new, new transfer. Uh, our center could play in any probably any school in Division Two, any school, and be the starter. Very good player. Um, but anyway, back to Blake. Blake's done a great job as a freshman. Come in, picked it up right, right away. And uh, big body kid that we think can stuff the run and cause some problems for uh, opposing offenses. Um, then offensively, we have 
Oh, two receivers we think uh, that are freshmen that are going to play. Uh, a guy by the name of Gavin Garner. He's six four. He ran a four four one electronic forty uh, this summer because he came and worked out all summer. Uh, just gone up and made plays all all camp. You know he's been able to jump. You know jump over guys. He's taller than everybody. Really excited about what he can do on the outside for us in our passing game. Uh, we got an interior guy from Allen, Texas. Gavin's from uh, Newcastle, by the way, Newcastle, Oklahoma. And then, um, uh, so three Oklahoma kids, that's really good. You know, three Oklahoma kids, because we're, that's our recruiting base, you know, Oklahoma and Texas, or North Texas. And then the uh, other freshman that probably will probably play as a freshman on offense is Kerry Hall. He's a little slot receiver. If you remember Arte, number 28, uh, from last year, who caught eight touchdowns for us. This is, he's a spitting image of, of, of Arte, uh, just a freshman. Um, he's going to be number 17. Uh, he's from Allen, Texas, Allen High School in Texas, and uh, has just come in right away and fit in and, and really done. Love the way the kid practices. He's 100 miles an hour all the time. Uh, already kind of become a leader amongst the young guys, which is good to see. Um, so those guys are really excited about. Then we got some transfers in. Um, that were, we have a left tackle right, from Northern Alabama who the NFL scouts come and see and, and talk to me about all the time. He's uh, very, very long. Very lean old lineman that uh, gives Joby fits, and Joby's you know an NFL prospect, a true NFL prospect. So, uh, I'm really excited about Lorenzo Allen, newcomer at, at left tackle. Uh, then, then let's see, we have a tight end named Jamar Morris, that's six foot, I think he's six four, but he can run. He runs like a receiver, playing tight end uh, with him and Riley both in. It creates a lot of Riley Hess creates a lot of matchup problems with our size. We're going to be a lot taller than most of the DBs and linebackers we're playing against. So, uh, very sorry about, excited about Jamar. Jamar's from Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin, uh, high school in Wisconsin. Went to junior college in uh, Arizona and then uh, got him from there. So, uh, been, been, been very dynamic in camp, made a lot, a lot of plays. Uh, then, of course, you guys have probably heard me talk about the running back. All right, the running back is special. All right, had three or four touchdowns yesterday. He just is different. Um, big, big old boy, Anthony Cota. Uh, runs like he's he's a little guy, but he's, you know, 6'2", 240 pounds, playing tailback, you know. So, uh, and, and when he does get tackled, he still gets four yards because he falls forward, you know, and he's so big. So, very excited about uh, him. Um, I mean, this it's looks different. It looks different in a good way. Where's he uh, from? He's from Modesto, California, and he ta – I told this story at Rotary. He, he walked on here. I talked to him into walking on here. He Out of high school, he's a four-star recruit. And stars mean really nothing. I get that, right? But he uh, was offered by every Pac-12 school, you know, USC, UCLA, all those schools, um, Oregon, you know, and decide – well, he couldn't get in to any school because of his grades. High school grades. Well, actually, I think it was his core courses. He didn't have 16 core courses. So he goes to Modesto Junior College, has a great first year, all right? Then then has some, some personal issues. Uh, his GPA goes way down. Doesn't get in trouble or anything, but he has a kid. His GPA goes way down. Uh, I don't know how, why he chose us, but we, I made a phone call because I heard he wasn't going to get to go anywhere in Division One. So I just made a phone call. Talk to him about, hey, you want to come here? And if you walk on, if you walk on, I'll take care. And you get a 3.5 GPA, I'll take care of you. So when I looked this up the other day, he got a 3.5, I thought. No, he got a 3.75. So I looked up the first semester, he ended up with a 3.75, put him on scholarship, and he's been, you know, he got a 3.38 last semester. So his QM's still over a 3.5. Uh, he got married, brought his kid out here, his, his daughter and his, his wife out here. Uh, so they live here now. Um, just a uh, pretty, pretty neat story considering, you know, um, I still don't know why he came out here. I mean, I just talked him into it, I guess, you know. But uh, he's going to be, he's going to be something, added, added dimension, and Reed won't have to do as much. And last year I asked him to do too much. Everybody always asks about the picks. I'm like, well, he had a lot of picks, a lot of tip balls, and I put too much on him. You know, I, I, I mean, I made him do too much. And uh, I won't have to do that this year. And, and I knew that last year, too. I knew I was putting too much on it. But I said, hey, it's the best chance to win. So let's go. 
Yeah. Uh, how many plays? All right. You guys all remember Al, Al Hunt, who played with me and, and may be the greatest player that ever played here. I mean, I know Pat, but, but Al was something different in college, too. So those two guys. Anyway, Al, Al in, in 2000, when we were the number one offense in the country, all right, he had 200, I think it was 250, 250 plays that he accounted for, whether he ran the ball or, ran, or threw the ball. 250 plays that whole year, all right? Last year, Reed had 660 plays that he either threw the ball or ran the ball. That's way too much to put on anyone. And uh, I know that, and I knew that then, but, hey, I was best chance to win type deal. So, uh, no, they matter. They matter. Uh, we'll definitely be more efficient with that. Hey, throughout throughout fall camp, he has been very efficient with the ball. I mean, no picks. Uh, I think he has one. It was a tip ball, obviously. Another tip ball. Tip ball is always in, the, in bad. Uh, but he has one throughout camp and uh, has been, again, very smart with the football, which is what I asked him to take the play. Take the play they give you. Don't try to make too much out of, out of it. And he's done that and taken that to heart and done a great job. And what's great about him is he's uh, – He's like an NFL player right now in the sense that he has no class. He's graduated. He graduated. So his two classes are online and by arrangement. And so he gets to basically do them whenever he wants. So he just comes down there and hangs out with me all day. So he watches film all day and gets to, um, you know, really be involved with what we're doing. So when your quarterback's involved with what you're doing, he can sit there all day with you game planning, you know, you know, it's what he likes to do, and it's going to be good. At it. So uh, that's been a uh, that's going to be a great advantage. Like the last three days, he's been down there in my office from nine to noon every day. So that's that's a definite plus for us. So anything else? All right. Well, hey. You can eat there. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you guys very much, and I uh, hope to see you out there September first.